now let's move on. So in mathematics, people, they can spend entire semesters just on uh, material um, uh, pertaining to, to vector spaces and, and Banach spaces. Today we will have to move a little bit quicker, um, but uh, we will have like uh, at least some mathematical rigor, um, but um, uh, we cannot do all the proofs uh, due to time constraints and in order to get to, to the applications that are interesting to us. Okay, so we saw vector spaces, addition, multiplication and so on. And uh, what we are adding now is uh, a notion of distance. And uh, for this, we define norms. So a normed vector space uh, is a vector space in essence. And in addition, has a real valued function that maps uh, every element to a real number. And uh, we call that the norm when it holds uh, a couple of axioms. So uh, for the norm, we can think about the norm as a length. So we want to describe the length of a vector. And uh, for that, we have the norm. And um, the axioms are that the norm is always, uh, or is at least zero. And that the norm is exactly zero only if x is the null vector. Um, so um, we can also think about the, the norm as like the distance to the null vector. Uh, so if here we have zero and then x is the vector going out from that, um, then the norm would be zero only if x here would also be exactly the, the, uh, the, the null vector. Okay. Now, uh, the next one is important, the triangle equality, inequality, when I take the norm of x plus y, then the norm of that will be smaller than the norm of x plus the norm of y. Um, and uh, the, third, the third axiom is that if I take the norm of alpha x, this would be the same as um, multiplying the absolute value of alpha with the norm of x. And uh, so there are many different norms and for all of them we will uh, check that this uh, or we can check that uh, these three axioms are holding. Now when we have a norm, this norm automatically implies a distance function. So when I have two vectors x and y, then I can define the distance function between them as the norm of x minus y. And uh, this is also symmetric. So here, this would also equal um, y minus x uh, would, would have the same distance. And uh, just from the norm axioms, we have following axioms uh, for, for the distance. So for example, the distance between x and y is only zero if x is equal to y. Uh, this is also known as the identity of indiscernibles. So if I cannot distinguish two elements by the distance, then they have to be identical. Okay, then the triangle inequality, we also have that for, for uh, the, the distance metric and uh, well, also, also symmetry. Um, um, we, we saw that just before. Okay, these are norms. And now, um, what are possible examples for norms? One of them you have already encountered prior. So uh, before we saw the Euclidean norm that you know from, from, from normal geometric vectors. So if I here take the Euclidean norm of x, then this would be, and this is maybe a, a 2D vector, and this would be x1 squared plus x2 squared and the square root of the entire thing. And uh, here I was writing this little two here. And uh, this little two, um, well, I put it there for the Euclidean norm, but this is also an indicator that this doesn't have to be a two, uh, because here I can also choose different values. And I call this the family of the P norms. And I can here choose um, many, many kinds of the P. And, um, Let's give you some example of what I get for, for other values. 
uh, for p, so for p equals to 1. Uh, this is the Manhattan norm, so where I just have uh, the sum of the absolute values of the uh, elements of my vector. Yeah? So here I'm in Rn, and therefore each vector can be... Uh, I can look at the different elements of the vector, and um, um, I'm taking here always the sum, um, of the elements and uh, for the Manhattan norm with p equals to 1, it's just the sum of the absolute values. Now, if I choose p equal to 2, then I will uh, square every element, sum them up, and then uh, take the square root of the entire thing. Um, but it becomes very interesting if I, if I increase p even further. So, uh, by letting p tend to infinity, uh, so here it shouldn't be equal, it should be here by p uh, in the limit going to infinity, I get the, the, the maximum norm and uh, there I'm just now taking the, uh, the, the largest, the absolute value or the largest of the absolute values for the elements of, of my x. Um, so on the right hand side we see some visualization, so here we see uh, the, the uh, Manhattan norm. This is called the Manhattan norm um, uh, because it looks like, like the, the, the city layout of an American city um, where for a taxi driver it's not very important uh, where he is crossing over because essentially uh, there are many different tours from point A to point B that have the same distance. Um, and uh, what is uh, shown on the lower side of the right hand side, this is the unit circle for different values of p. So um, let's first look at the unit circle, uh, the, the green unit circle here, which is just the, the, the typical unit circle you would expect. So all the values that lie here, so here we would have zero in the middle, and here there would be exactly one, and here there would be exactly one. Here is minus one, and here is minus one in, in the respective dimension. Um, so all points that uh, lie on the green circle, they have a distance of exactly one um, to the uh, to the null vector. Uh, but now by choosing different p, this unit circle will will look different, and um, um, yeah, this is just a, a nice visualization of what happens if I'm modulating and, and increasing or decreasing the p here. Okay, so um, we will not individually check the norm axioms uh, here, but um, I think the biggest takeaway is that there can be many different norms, even for, for the uh, Rn space. Uh, basically, it's, it's a design decision of, uh, of which norm I, I want to use. Uh, but the, the results uh, that we develop here for, for vector spaces, they will work independently of the norm that I am choosing. Okay. Now, we saw the notion of distance, and um, we can now ask the question of convergence. Uh, so, uh, convergence essentially means that um, the distance to uh, the limit uh, or to the limit point is uh, reduced and is continually reducing down to zero. And uh, but now let's make this more precise. We will now uh, go in the direction of so-called Banach spaces. Uh, Banach spaces were developed by Stefan Banach. Here you see him on a picture where he was roughly at the age where he developed these results. And um, these are really, really a workhorse in, in mathematics and, and used in, in many different places. Um, already earlier in uh, one of the previous lectures, we saw um, a convergent series and uh, we used that in the discussion of open and closed sets. And now we make this uh, idea or this notion of convergence um, more rigorous and more precise. Now, let's take a, uh, a sequence of uh, elements from a normed vector space X. Uh, 
Yeah, so here, instead of series, we should be writing a sequence. Um, so here we just have a, a series, x1, x2, x3, and so on. And uh, well, we, have, we have such a series and all the elements or entries in our series, they are all in, in big X. And big X is a non-vector space. And um, we say that this series converges if there is some element y for which the distance between y and the xi decreases when I'm increasing the i. Yeah? So um, I'm looking at the distance of uh, x1 minus y and this should be uh, bigger than the distance of x2 minus y and so on. Yeah? So I'm decreasing the distance to y by going forward or stepping forward in, in the sequence. Um, but more precisely, what does this convergence now mean? Convergence means that for every epsilon larger than zero, but arbitrarily small, uh, I can choose epsilon very small, um, for every epsilon bigger zero, there exists an index m um, where all the uh, entry series after m in the sequence um, are closer to epsilon than uh, are, are closer to y than epsilon. Okay, so that depends. Uh, I can choose epsilon as small as I'd like. Uh, I can find some m so that all elements in the sequence after m are um, closer than epsilon to, to the point to which they are converging. Okay. And uh, now there's a, a second notion of convergence, um, which is, says that a, a sequence is called a Cauchy sequence um, if uh, for all the entries or if the distance of xi minus xj converges to zero, um, um, when I uh, want um, i and j larger than some index n. Again here, I choose some epsilon bigger than zero, but arbitrarily small. Um, there will be an index m that for every i and j that I'm choosing in the sequence after this m, their distance will be smaller than epsilon. Okay. And in a non-vector space, Every convergence sequence is also a, a Cauchy sequence. So this is some of the prerequisites of, of uh, proofs. Okay, and um, um, so here on the, this was maybe a little bit dense, here on the right hand side, uh, in the lower corner, we see a non-Cauchy sequence. So here this is starting to, to oscillate and um, the uh, I can move um, forward in, in the sequence um, and uh, this is not Cauchy because when I choose an epsilon that is very small, let's say, I'm not sure whether it is, this is the actual epsilon, but let's say I uh, choose epsilon 10 to the minus 10, so something very small, and um, I can move forward however I'd like, I will always be able to get some points that are um, um, some distance apart, um, so here these two points for example would be some distance apart, um, that is bigger than this epsilon and um, this, this, this cannot happen. Okay, so probably let's see here we would have, here this would be the i index increasing and uh, and here probably we then have the, um, uh, the xi on this. So what I'm looking at is actually only the distance in this direction here, but you get the idea here, this would be a non-convergent series sequence. Okay, uh, we will see more examples to make this a little bit clearer. And um, a non-vector space x is complete if every Cauchy sequence from x has its limit in x. So completeness, it's another 
uh, adjective that uh, we are learning today. So if every Cauchy sequence from X has its limit in X, then we call this entire thing complete. And uh, we will also call it a Banach space. Um, now, I think we need a counter example here. Otherwise, it might be a little bit difficult to, to, to imagine. Um, now again, we are looking at function spaces. So um, we are looking at the space of continuous functions and um, they have um, uh, a, a special, um, a special um, um, norm defined for them. And, um, but let's not, uh, let's, let's see the actual examples of this function space first. Now here we are defining a series uh, fi and uh, here I have different functions. Uh, or let's start at the very beginning. So uh, here this should be i equals 2 and i equals 3. Uh, now the first element here would be the function that goes like this. So I have a ramp. It ramps up until one half and then the function is flat. And the function in L201, uh, it is actually here only defined between, uh, between 0 and 1. So this is the definition range and um, then let's look at the next element in this uh, sequence and then another element in this sequence and so on. And um, what you see that all the elements of my sequence are continuous functions. And uh, if I'm uh, then looking at the, the distance, uh, so we can now define a, a norm for these functions and uh, I see that somehow they are converging. So here clearly they are converging to something and what they are converging to is the step function. And now I have a problem because now I have a series of uh, elements um, that is converging but that is converging to something that is not a continuous function. So uh, this is the, 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 the limit to which this is converging is not in the original vector space. And hence, this is an example for a, a non-complete norm space. Okay, why do I care? And uh, let's, uh, let's uh, unpack this a little bit, why we should care about this. Um, first of all, in many cases, we are fine because in any finite dimensional uh, subspace, we know that uh, it is complete. Uh, so everywhere, when we are looking at geometric vectors in, in Rn, um, um, we know that this is a complete uh, uh, subspace, so, so it's a Banach space, and all the results that we have for Banach spaces also apply here. Um, but uh, completeness is a prerequisite for uh, actually many of the optimization algorithms that we saw in the previous lectures. And now when we want to generalize these optimization algorithms to uh, to, 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 to uh, vector spaces, uh, we have to uh, consider completeness. And uh, let's give you an example for that. Now, um, let S be a subset of a norm vector space. So we have a norm vector space X and we consider some subset of that. And um, now we have a function that uh, is a transformation on S, so it takes an input from S and it gives an element from S back. And then we call this F a contraction if there exists some alpha between 0 and 1, but not exactly 1, such that um, the, the um, 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 F of X minus F of Y and taking the norm of that uh, this must be smaller than alpha times the norm of x minus the norm of y. In essence, that means uh, if I'm uh, applying f to two points, then these two points are moving closer together. And um, 
for the Banach spaces, so for complete spaces, we know that uh, if f is such a contraction, then there exists a fixed point x star, and by repeatedly applying the f to, to an element, and then reapplying it to the result, and reapplying it to the result, and so on, we will be converging to this fixed point x star. And now, in the context of an optimization problem, and of the iterative optimization methods, like gradient descent and the Newton method, um, they were actually, uh, uh, or they, the, the proof of convergence for them, uh, it relies on the, uh, this uh, Banach fixed point theorem. Uh, because these were also iterative methods that were uh, maybe in addition then with line search getting closer and closer and closer to the optimum. And uh, for convergence, uh, what has to be proven is that uh, an optimum exists and also that in every step we get a little bit closer to this optimum and um, when we take gradient descent and we are at the optimum and we want to take an additional gradient descent step, um, we will have exactly this. So um, uh, if now f is the, the gradient descent method, um, then we would not move away from, from the optimum. So uh, again, here we have reached a fixed point and then we will stick to the fixed point and also the fixed point is the optimum. Okay, that was quite a mouthful, but uh, what you have to take away from this slide is um, that uh, by having this completeness and having like a nice behaving space, um, many of the optimization algorithms can be can be can be applied or, or at least translate, and um, uh, this is really interesting for fa some fancy infinite dimensional vector spaces. But in general, uh, we don't have to specifically prove the uh, completeness because whenever we are in R n, uh, then we know that the space is also complete.